are back in school and public health officials say students learn better when they are well nourished. Now kids in eight states, including here in Minnesota, can eat free school meals this year thanks to a new law and state funding. Community gardens can also help promote access to good nutrition as well as encourage active and healthy lifestyle and improve mental health and well-being and inclusion um, for a sense of community. To talk about the benefits of community gardens and tips on what you can grow this fall, we are extremely very pleased to have with us Ying, a community gardener, and Ed with the Washington County Master Gardener. So thank you both for being thank with you. us. I really appreciate it, getting you out of the heat and into the studio here. <laughs> Probably just as hot as being outside. So Ying, you know, um, I know that you have done this community garden. Tell us what that means to you to have a community garden. What is that all about? This uh, community garden is truly a blessing for me because I have always wanted to grow vegetables. It's a long time dream of mine. Um, but I don't have enough space in my backyard. So every winter I would look through kit, uh, seed catalogs and imagining you know what I can grow but then I have to put the catalog down because I don't have space for it so when I heard about the garden I was really excited and um, you what are you getting out of it personally being a part why why is this such a true blessing for you um, so beside being able to finally grow things um, also to meet all these other gardeners who, who enjoy the same thing, who are passionate about the same thing, and uh, learn from them. Um, there's an incredible diversity of uh, you know, people and uh, uh, things being grown in the community garden. I really learn a lot. Has that really surprised you? Were you anticipating that you would have that camaraderie with the others and stuff like that? I sort of expected it, but it was more than I expected. Yeah, the, the variety of things, how helpful and willing to share people are. Yeah, and also the um, master gardeners and giving all these uh, talks about different things. I really learned a lot. Yeah. It is a blessing to have someone like Ed yeah. with, as a master gardener with us. Um, I know that there's community gardens all over in Minnesota and stuff, and that one of the newer ones is the Woodbury Community Garden. Tell us about that exactly. The city of Woodbury did a survey several years ago, and it kind of surprised them that having community gardens was uh, at the top of the list. And uh, so they looked at the other cities, and Woodbury was the largest city in, in Minnesota without a community garden. And so, uh, so they decided to start a community garden, and uh, they got a committee together of about eight people uh, to get it started uh, three years ago. As a master gardener, what do you enjoy being involved with the community garden? Uh, I enjoy uh, working with people. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a carpenter, uh, so I enjoy building things, so, so I got to do some of that. But more to work with people uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that enjoy it and uh, have a lot of questions, and, uh, and I'm I'm like uh, Ying, one of the, the one of the things that surprised me. I was just going to ask. Was you. that uh, uh, that after about a couple of weeks, they started interacting so much they weren't asking me as many questions <laughs> because they were getting the answers from other gardeners in the garden. So that 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 was quite a surprise. You know, you were saying that you didn't have that opportunity Ying, to have a community garden or to do a garden. Mm. So how did you decide what to put in the garden? And, and you've brought some of the products with you today. Yeah, so I always wanted to grow things that I, I grew up with uh, from my childhood. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is uh, I'm very curious about other culture and, you know, what, what other different uh, vegetables that they, they have. So I, I'm always into trying new things. This year I mainly focused on um, the things I used to know. Um, like for example, tomatoes, when I uh, was little, uh, I remember in the marketplace, tomatoes were uh, sold both as a fruit and a vegetable. Mm -hmm. But when I come to America, um, 
the grocery bought tomatoes, they just don't taste the same. They, there's no way it can be eaten like a fruit. So uh, I, yeah, I finally get to grow the kind of tomato that that's uh, bring back childhood memories. <laughs> oh wow, well, yeah, that brings back to my my dad and my family also growing tomatoes too. Yeah. Same thing. It's not quite the same what we might find at the grocery store and stuff yeah. like that. And then you bought some ones uh, yeah. specifically that we're looking at here that you brought? Yeah, so this is a winter melon. Um, this is also a very uh, Chinese uh, um, vegetable. Um, it uh, is in the cucumber family. It doesn't really have a lot of taste to itself, but it absorbs flavor from other things. So I'm going to make soup with it using ham and tofu. Oh, that sounds great. The, and this is a Korean sweet melon. And then um, this is a Japanese sweet melon. Uh, so those are two new things I'm uh, trying this year. Um, and you don't you usually see them in the grocery <laughs> store. And this is a round uh, uh, eggplant. Yeah. And Ed, you were saying this is a, a good time also to um, for fall? things what would be what would be some of the people that can plant now for the fall the same thing that you would plant early in the year they See, can stand no the idea. frost and that would be uh, like kale uh, uh, spinach uh, beets the things like that they can take a frost and do you have to do anything special uh, planting now at this time of the year uh, nope just uh, plant them and uh, and hope that uh, the uh, good hard freeze won't come early this year and is it good to have, what, what would be the type of um, plants or vegetables that you would recommend specifically? In, in a garden? Yeah. Yeah, the green beans, uh, tomatoes, uh, squash. In a community garden, it's, got, it's, it's a smaller space. The spaces are nine by 14, so, uh, so you're a little bit limited. Uh, but uh, you can get a lot of uh, good vegetables in there if, uh, if you do, do things like you read the, with the uh, square foot gardener. And, uh, and so you, you try to plant one thing in each square foot and, and so you can get more vegetables and uh, varieties. And what plants are more native to Minnesota as well that you would recommend? Uh, the, the squash, there's several squashes. Zucchini is uh, very popular and pretty prolific. Uh, uh, you don't want to grow any, uh, any perennials so, so you, you don't put raspberries and berries in there or strawberries or things like that. And is it too early to start think about planting things for a spring harvest and stuff like that? In Minnesota it is because of the, the, the winters are so hard. About the only thing you can plant now uh, would be uh, uh, onions and, uh, uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, so that's about all you can plant now. They'll make it through the winter and then be there in the spring where you can harvest it. Any tips or advice for someone maybe who's a novice at planting and stuff that to get success? I mean, what would you recommend, like for tools or, or things that they should be doing? Well, the first thing uh, for a novice gardener is to do a soil test to see uh, what nutrients uh, it's missing so you know exactly what to add because you can over fertilize. And then, uh, then to put the spade in the ground and see if, uh, see if the ground is loose doesn't need any amendments like uh, mulch or compost uh, to help help it along. And the more compost it has, it absorbs the water and holds the water. You know, and it's been kind of a tough, it seems like a tough year for growing with lack, lack of water, especially around here. Any advice for people whether they're, if they still have their crops or their, their plants or they're planting on planting stuff? Board, make sure that they get enough moisture and water and stuff like that. Yeah, the the drought has been pretty tough, and it's been really tough on tomatoes particularly. You have to water those almost every other day. Uh, but the green beans and squash and the leaf, the big leafy vegetables can uh, can usually stand uh, the the drought much more so than the, than like tomatoes that are very sensitive. Yeah, it looks like the heat is going to be with us for a little bit longer here yet. Yeah. And then um, anything that you had learned that you wish you would have done differently having gone through this, you know, first experience with the community garden and stuff? Yeah. What were uh, lessons that you learned? 
Um, first of all, I, I think some of the, uh, like the corn, I grow them too close together. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I grow four rows, only the outside two rows had a good yield, and the middle two rows um, I produced very small corn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I learned from other uh, gardeners how to prop up, uh, how to support tomatoes. Um, oh. um, when they grow pretty tall, yeah. I used a tomato cage, but uh, they weren't uh, sturdy enough, so there's a more sturdy way to support them. Wow, yeah. great lessons that you learned, though. Mm -hmm. um, final comments on where people can get more information and things like that? Yes, uh, the University of Minnesota has a website uh, that's, uh, that's very useful. There's, there's thousands of pages, so you go to that. It's uh, the www.extension.umn.edu backslash garden. And uh, once you get started, it'll, you can drill down into any subject you want to do with gardening. Well, you're such a resource of information. I would go, call Ed. <laughs> <laughs> well, really a pleasure to have you both with us. And thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your advice. Um, still ahead, we talk with a local doctor about ways to prevent fall sports injuries. So stay with us.